Hi, this is the Optics Video Blog on YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is Optics Realm. Why is my page down not working? Today we're going to talk about secondary color in an achromatic doublet. This is Optics Tutorial 11. And we're simply going to talk about the theory of secondary color, what it is and how to predict it, and some other gla a new glass material property. Here's a nice infographic on what secondary color is. Recall in an acromat, you take your two wavelength extremes and you put the focus on top of each other. In this case, you're doing red and blue. And then the center wavelength in the visible, uh, it would be green. The distance, the, the, the axial distance, the distance along the optical axis, that is the secondary color. And this is greatly dramatized here, just for clarity. A couple definitions. Depending on secondary color, just as I said, depending on whether it's visible, it's the defocus from the blue, red to the green, or in a generic case, uh, generic wave band case, it's the central wavelength defocus to the two wavelength extremes. And graphically, in a graph, this can be shown here in the verticals wavelength, red at the top, blue at the bottom, green in the middle, and the horizontal is this focus shift, and you can see that red and blue fall on top of each other and this difference is again secondary color just to be the dead horse and say the definition over and over again learning is repetition and organization and hopefully this is organized enough and we need to define a new optical material property called partial dispersion partial dispersion is your central wavelength the index at your central wavelength minus the index at the long wavelength, so that's the, the in the numerator, in the denominator is the index difference from the two wavelength extremes. And in the visible, so this is n sub d, which is 587 minus n sub c, 656, divided by n sub f, n sub c, which is 486 to 656. Shot in their catalog, their glass catalog, uses partial uh, in terms of gamma and beta, and that's the wavelengths of the index in the numerator. In the denominator, they keep F and C constant. This theory was worked out by uh, Schott and, er, um, and Abe back in the day. So here's a partial, a, a visible partial glass map, and it's similar to the regular glass map. In the horizontal axes, plots the dispersion, or Inver or the reverse of the Abe number. So high Abe at the, at the left, low Abe at the right, and again, high dispersion on the right. The vertical is partial dispersion. So in this case, we're going from 0.27 to 0.31. And most visible glasses fall on this glass line or this normal dispersion line. And I've showed a number, number of materials here, and if they've, they're in multiple catalogs, Shot O'Hara and CDGM, I'm showing where showing what these different glasses are. So how do you predict secondary color in an acromat? It's very it's actually very simple. The difference from the green to the the wavelength extreme focus, the the that delta power divided by power, it's equivalent to the focal length divided uh, the delta focus divided by the focus. I think there's actually a negative sign between these, but it's proportional to delta partial dispersion divided by delta V or delta Abe number. And so for a really good doublet or a good doublet that has low secondary color, you're gonna have similar partials and you're gonna have radically different Abe numbers. Hi, this is post edit. This slide was at first in, done incorrectly. So I've modified this particular video to, to update this. Let's talk about the definition of the normal glass line on the partial map. Schott defines this normal line by two glasses, K7 and NF2. And there goes my mouse missing again, NF2. K7's at a Abe of 60, and the partial at FC is 0 0.305, whereas N-F2 is an Abe of 36.4, and a partial FC partial of 0 0.293. Using these two data points, if I did my uh, equation for a line correctly, this partial line is roughly 5 times 10 to the minus 4 times Abe plus 0.275, or just approximate it, Abe divided by 2,000 plus 0.275. Now the slope, 
uh, 1 over 2,000, that slope is delta P over delta V. And that is exactly what your secondary color is, that slope, delta P over delta V. Therefore, most acromats, if they're going to fall on that glass line, which most of them fall very close, a good rule of thumb, that secondary color, the, the defocus from C to D light, is the focal length at D times the slope, or it's roughly the focal length divided by 2,000. A great rule of thumb to remember for a visible acromat. The secondary color is the focal length divided by 2,000. Let's look at that on the visible glass chart, visible glass map. Abe in the, in the horizontal and partial dispersion in the vertical. Here's K7 and here's NF2 and here's the line, this visible glass line for this particular um, definition. And again, the, the glass lines Abe divided by 2000 plus 0.275 or the slope is 1 over 2000. So how do we use the partial map? What how do we get information out of it? Now recall we want matched partials. We have matched the closer the partials are, the lower the secondary color. And you want uh so you want a line that is as long as a horizontal line that's as long as possible. And to do that, you have to have a glass that falls off this normal line. In this case, I've shown calcium fluoride. It ends up being a pretty good match with uh, S-LaL8, if you like O'Hara. The problem is when these glasses fall off this glass line, they tend to be exotic and a little bit more expensive. Uh, let's see. So I'm doing an example here, FSL5 and NPH2. I believe this was the same same glass pair I did in the Acromat. We solved for what the powers need to be. And um, let me jump ahead one slide. Here's the referen do reference documents for off of O'Hara's website for FSL5 and NPH2. So you can see I've highlighted in red the Abe number, and I've highlighted the numerator N sub F minus N sub C here for FSL, and then the, the denominator N sub D minus N sub C. So this you can quickly get these date this data off their data uh, data sheets their PDF data sheets. So calculating partial is just you know dividing these two numbers. So the crown FSL five is 0 0.28, whereas the flint uh, NPH two is 0 0.31. And to calculate the the secondary color for this doublet, we and again we calculated the power. I believe we calculated the power in optics tutorial ten. The secondary color is 0.28 minus 0.31, delta partial, divided by the delta Abe, 70 minus 19, or it's roughly 58 microns. Here's the general definitions if you're not in the visible. In general, your um, Abe, excuse me, your V number, Abe denotes visible, your V number, your center wavelength minus 1, divided by the wavelengths, the, the index at the two wavelength extremes. Likewise, for the partial, it's the center index, uh, the index at the center wavelength minus the long wavelength index divided by the delta of those two. And I give the equations for what that would be at, say, the mid wave and then for the visible to near IR. Here's some previews. I'll be video podcasting about diffractives and then probably a separate one on apochromats. Apochromat is three common foci. You can do that with two materials. More often, you've got to use three materials. I have some other things. I love color correction. I love doing color. Um, you need to do that first before you start worrying about all the other aberrations in refractive, you know, before you worry about you know spherical and astigmatism and coma. I'll get to those eventually, but right now I, I'm enjoying uh, vlogging on color. Some other topics I can do are spherochromatism, how uh, spherical aberration changes sign with wavelength, and of course I'd have to do spherical aberration first. I could talk about lateral color a little bit more, and I've got a preview uh, what that is in the next slide. And a colleague of mine, um, Dr. Shepard, uh, we're working on a paper right now to show how to minimize glass dispersion tolerances by controlling surface or element axial color contributions, Seidel contributions. And if you want, let me go back, 
if you want me these last three if, if anyone's interested just please put down in the comments below like hey i'd be interested in whatever this is here's a preview and i think i did this last uh last time on what uh axial color is Seidel, the Seidel equation for the axial color i've included it here because now i want to talk about lateral color recall in for axial color, axial color can be computed over all your elements, essentially your marginal ray divided by, at each element, marginal ray at that element divided by its abe and its focal length. You sum it up over all the elements, you get your axial color. Likewise, for lateral color, it's the same thing, but it's marginal ray times the chief ray divided by that same quantity. Said another way, the lateral color, the psi del lateral sum, is essentially your axial, but you multiply it by the chief ray, divide by the marginal ray. So as I was taught um, by Dick Buckroder, the, the way to control lateral really is to minimize axial, which is why I've spent so much time kind of fixated on it. Here's homework. I've got, you know, seven or ten questions. I'm going to be adding more questions to my homework. These ultimately feed into my company's training and company website. Uh, we do online testing for this. If you have questions, please please post below, and I hopefully I, I will be getting the solutions to these on my my website, opticsrealm.com. Uh, here's my contact information. If you have any questions pertinent to this particular uh, video podcast, uh, please contact me at these. You can contact me here. The best way is to leave a contact, uh, a comment down below. Um, I think I'm a little bit more responsive to that. I've been very slow to respond to um, comments on my website and my email, and I apologize for that. Thanks for tuning in, and I really appreciate all the video hits and all the subscribers I'm getting. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Have a good day.